Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So Studio One Pro 7 is out. And with that, we have the brand new launcher, which is great because it gives you an independent timeline to try out new ideas without affecting what's already on the arrangement. And with that, because of the great synergy between hardware and software products here at Personas, we also have some brand new controls for the Atom SQ and Atom pad controllers that I want to show you today. So if you're interested in the launcher, if you want to see all it has to offer, and if you have an Atom or you're interested in one to try it out for yourself, then follow along. It's got to be a blast. All right. So First of all, I have an arrangement here. Let me play this for you really quickly. I've already featured this in a few demos, but um, here you go. So that's the bridge part. This will later go into the chorus. I'm a kid of the 80s, what can I say? And uh, it will then proceed into the finale final bit that sounds like this okay so let's say that i want to try out a new arrangement for all this right like maybe i like the sounds and i'm happy with the mix and everything so far but i'd like to try a different structure before i commit and do a mix down and this is exactly where the launcher comes in so the launcher can be opened up either by clicking here on this icon or by pressing b on the keyboard this is the new keyboard shortcut and my favorite way to use the launcher, obviously I could just record arm a track and then record something in here, is to just take all the arranger sections that I already have and just move them with a drag and drop motion onto the launcher like so. And once I've done that, I can actually make the launcher exclusive, hiding the timeline altogether by clicking on this button. Or I can also just drag on this handle here to resize and see both ways of looking at the timeline side by side. In my case, I'm probably going to go for the side by side view for now because I want to show you what this toggle does. So when I press on this arrow here, you can see that the playback of all tracks is moving over to the launcher and everything that's on the timeline here on the left is grayed out. That is because the track can only play from one place at the same time. I can't hear the track from the launcher and from the arrangement at the same time, but I can have different settings for each track. So for example, I could say the bass should come from the arrangement and uh, that will make it very easy for me to for example listen to the verse bass and audition that together with the pre-verse drums right if I wanted to do that on the timeline I would have to first remove the drums here from the verse and then move the pre-verse drums over and I wouldn't really do that unless I'm certain it works and that way I'm also not discovering a lot of possibilities that would reveal themselves if I just try out stuff. But this is too tedious, it's not really fun to do on a linear timeline, so that's why the launcher is such a great feature. I also especially like it in exclusive mode with all the toggles to the right like this, and then I can try, for example, the drums from the intro with the bass from the verse, with the lead of the final section. And this is a completely different vibe than what I had before. And if you wanted to do that on the timeline, you would have to move all of this stuff around. You would really only do this if you're 100% sure it's worth the effort. Okay, so now that we have a good understanding of the basic launcher functionalities and its benefits, let's look at the Atom integration specifically, which is the topic of this video. Now, the launcher integration is available for both the Atom SQ as well as the Atom, but for this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the Atom functionality right here. I love how intuitive that is. So to access the launcher control mode here on Atom, I just need to hold down Shift and then press the Bank button. And that's all you need to do to enter the new launcher control mode as you can see the color of the path has also shifted that's because I'm no longer controlling virtual instruments but the actual launch cells on the launcher let me show you for example if I want to hear the third event of the drums I just hit the third of the blue pads because my drums are colored in blue here in studio one if I had a different color the atom would also have that color accordingly and if I want to hear that together with the bass, which is track two of the fourth section, I just tap that pad. 
The playback is always in sync thanks to the launch quantization, which is currently set to one bar. So if I press the pad, that change will always occur on the next bar. It can be changed if I want with a right click to any other value that I want. Now, if I want to stop any of the playing pads that are currently pulsing, I can hold down shift to temporarily toggle into track control mode here on Adam. And here in the fourth column where I see the playing pads pulsing, I can just tap these and they will stop playing at the next bar. The other three columns that you see here when you hold down shift in track control mode are for record arming. So as soon as I, for example, record arm track three here, notice how the stop button on the cells is turning into a record button and then I could just tap this pad to record directly into it. And the column two and one are for soloing and muting any playing tracks respectively. It's really cool, by the way, that shift is a toggle, meaning that as soon as I let go, I return back into the cell launch mode. And this makes it super easy to go back and forth between launching, soloing, muting and stopping pads. Let me show you. So for example, I can play the drums from the intro and hear that together with the bass from the bridge and then navigate with the left and right buttons to my other available cells to hear, for example, this arrangement together with the lead from the finale, from the final session. And if I want to briefly take out the drums, which would be a very normal thing to do in electronic music, I just hold down shift, tap the drums, and then tap them again to play them. Super fun, super intuitive. You learn this in a matter of five minutes. Cool. So what can I do if I want to launch an entire scene, like an arranger section then? Well, in that case, I just push select. And this is actually a behavior that's not like a hold down and toggle, but more of a switch. Right now I'm switching from the launch control mode into the section or scene play mode. And here I can see that I have seven pads, which corresponds to the seven scenes or arranger sections that I have available for launching. And if I hit, for example, the first scene that will launch the first scene here in my launcher. And from there, it goes up the stairs left to right until we hit 16. And of course, it could also be more than 16 arranger sections. I would use the navigation buttons again. But if I want to hear the section that's currently colored in red, the final, I just tap it. And to mute any of the playing cells, I just quit the scene playing mode, toggle shift. It's so easy. You get into this in a matter of minutes. So to me, this integration has been the real eye opener when it comes to using the launcher in Studio One Pro 7 and have a ton of fun doing so. If you haven't, Adam, then make sure to use it with the launcher in Studio One Pro 7. It's gonna be a blast. Thank you so much for watching.